Hi, I'm Bruce Asher, and in this video, we're going to look at how to get started with MIDI in Cubase. Let's start by adding an instrument track. And in this case, I'm going to choose Retrolog. So we have this track here, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the little Edit Instrument icon. So here we have the main Retrolog window, and we can select presets using this drop down menu, which allow you to choose presets based on a whole lot of different categories, but you can also search uh, actually using search terms, so text search terms there. I'm actually going to be using this sound which I've saved previously. This sound has got one basic oscillator, and it's also going through a few little effects which you can see have been set up here. So now let's look at adding some MIDI. The first thing I need to do is actually look at the transport window at the bottom, and you can see we have the play and record buttons. The other thing I need to think about is actually getting a sense of what the tempo does. So at the moment, it's set to 97 beats per minute. I can actually hear that if I actually enable the metronome here. So that allows me to get a sense of the tempo of the track as a whole. Also you'll notice that when I actually press record, it actually runs for one bar before it then starts recording. You'll notice the track turns red, and because I'm not actually playing anything on the keyboard, nothing will be recorded. When I press stop, it just disappears. If I then choose to record something, that will then turn into events. Let's try something here. And you'll see it also loop round. And now I'm back in play mode with the metronome going. Let's zoom in a little bit further on this. And you can see, even on the project window, there are some of these little lines here which represent the notes I've actually played. We can delve into them in a little bit more detail by double clicking on that event and going into the MIDI ed editor. But as I've said before, Cubase has lots of ways of doing the same thing. So I can equally access it from the main project page by clicking on this and selecting the event. And it opens up all these events in this piano roll underneath. But let's just leave that for the time being. What I'm gonna do now is actually open up the MIDI editor as a separate window. Now I can do that by clicking on the event also accessing it from the MIDI menu here and clicking on Open Key Editor. And you'll notice it opens up a completely separate window. And these events, you can see my playing wasn't so great because you can see how the time is different between some of these notes. Um, they are actually colored based on velocity. And you can select how the coloring affects what you see. So if we want to change the colors in relation to pitch, we can select it here also in relation to MIDI channel and various other settings. But let's stick with velocity for the moment. Let's also turn off that metronome. So if I select an event, you'll notice that it highlights it down here and you'll also see that it actually shows the velocity. So that's the speed with which I've actually played the keyboard, and that will sometimes change the tonal characteristics of the sound, but at the very least, it will normally change the loudness of that particular sound. But it does vary on how the actual instrument has been set up. I can change that velocity by using this tool here. As soon as I move into that lower zone, it turns in the pencil, I can actually change the velocity. Equally, I can select a whole bunch of events, and I actually can drag them to change the velocity by clicking on this upper area here. We can also make that lower area slightly bigger if I want to see a little bit more detail. And of course, the zoom controls that you get with the main project window allow you to see more or less of those events across the keyboard. And you can see here, this left-hand area actually represents the keyboard itself, with the notes I've selected showing as coloured events along the side. If I select one, it will just show that. If I select a lot of them, it will show all these along the side, with the colors representing the kind of average velocities of those particular events. We can also notice other things about these events in, in, the, in the MIDI editor. You'll notice they have a length, which can be changed. 
you can change lengths also together as well using these tools. And as I change to where I am with the events, if I go to the end of the event, you notice the tool, tool type actually changes. And I can change those. So there's lots of different ways you can actually manipulate the events within Cubase. Another aspect that I might want to change is also the pitch. I can move events around. Something, of course, that I mentioned before is the timing of events. Now, if I zoom in to this, you'll notice that even when I was playing chords, the timing of some of them is a little bit, well, it's not quite right in terms of them occurring at the same time. Now, what I can do is, of course, I can move the events around. Something worth pointing out also is that you have this grid that gives you a guideline as to where things occur. And normally that will be set to 16th notes. That's probably the most common in terms of actually being able to see what's going on. We can change this snap button to on, and it means that whenever I move events around, it nudges them to the very nearest snap position. And that's very helpful when you're moving events around and you want something to play in time. Of course, players, real people, don't always play exactly to a grid, so you will see that the events sit sometimes outside of that, like my slightly slapdash playing here. But at least the grid gives a guideline as to where th things might fit within a general musical time scale. There are a whole bunch of other functions which actually act on MIDI events. If you go into the MIDI menu, you'll see in this drop down here, we can go into functions and there's a whole load of other things that we can do. We can manipulate individual events. We can also look at manipulating whole sets of events together, scaling them, changing them, do all kinds of very interesting things. The next step, I suppose, is given that the playing, as I mentioned before, is a little bit sloppy, and given this is an electronic based track that I might want to start, and I'm looking for something a little bit more regimented in terms of time, something that would be really useful will be to actually try and correct some of that timing. And there's a really useful feature called Quantize, which allows me to do that. Now, you'll see this queue at the top of the window. And as I mentioned before, this grid can be conformed to a very, very fine scale or very, very broad scale. This one-to-one -one means that it's going to be set to bars. But if I go to 16th, as I say, it's probably the most common for this type of track, you'll see that my events are quite close to some of those gray lines. If I want to make them snap all in one go to the nearest of those lines, I can use the quantize button. If I press Q here, you'll see they all nudge straight away. There are more advanced functions when it comes to quantizing as well. You can do um, a lot with this quantize panel uh, and it allows you to see that what the grid type is. You can do some quite clever things like adding swing and moving events around and doing some more advanced features of the quantize within this. If you want to update what you're doing, while you're actually accessing the controls. If I press auto and I start moving some of these things around, you'll see that the events move automatically. For example, if I set the grid to one to one, it suddenly moves all the events and snaps them to the beginning of the bar, which clearly is not what I want to do in this case. If I press this button, button here, it will reset everything. Let's go back to our 1 16th grid and press quantize and suddenly everything starts to make sense in terms of it occurring on time. Let's have a listen to that. So you can hear straight away that the timing is much more on point. Another thing I might want to look at, of course, is uh, looking at correcting velocity and even lengths. Uh, and there's very simple ways of doing that. If we just go back to our MIDI menu, and I'm going to choose this function and I choose fix lengths. And straight away what that does, it conforms the lengths to this 1 16th grid. So we're going for something that isn't particularly human, we're going for that more robotic feel. And equally, we can do things where we want to fix the velocity. So we can actually go here and actually choose fix velocity. And suddenly it sets all the events to the same velocity. So for electronic styles, this is often what we might be looking at doing. But of course, we might want to add a little bit of humanity back into there and add some of our own timing or velocity changes which might affect the sort of tonality of the sound, in which case we might go in and choose some of these and actually try rescaling them.
Now in this case, you'll see that actually what's going on is the synth itself doesn't actually respond to velocity. So if we dip back into the synth here and you'll see that there are options for actually changing how a particular synth will actually respond to velocity. Velocity is just the, the, the speed and the intensity with which I played the keyboard. Now that will determine the tone of the sound only if I specify that it should do. And in this case, if I change the amplification to the amplifier section and change that velocity element there, and then come back and go into the event, you'll see that it does have some bearing. So that one's a lot quieter. Now, of course, we can change the groove by not only changing the timing, but also changing the velocity of the synth sounds um, and the events that actually play back. Um, and that actually allows you, even within electronic styles, to create a little bit of interest in the track. So now let's look at adding something else to this. We've got this very basic chord pattern. And I might want to add, look at adding some drums. So in this case, I'll go to Add Instrument. I'll look at adding Groove Agent SE. I'll say Add Track. I'm now going to go into the instrument itself. So I've got the instrument loaded here, and I can then look at actually adding some kits. So in this case, I'm going to choose a kit that will work with the style I'm working on. So I've loaded up the house kit 01, and you'll notice that we've got these pads along the left-hand side. If I click on the pads, it actually plays a whole load of different sounds. Not only drum sounds, but samples and chords, whatever happens to have been loaded into this kit in the first place. Also, when I play the keyboard, you'll notice I can actually play back the sounds as well. Now let's get this playback going. One thing I'm gonna turn off here is this pre-roll. If I have that turned on, even in play mode, it does a pre-roll before something comes in. If I turn that off, it means when I play it, it goes straight away. Now, unlike before, where I just started recording, I had to work to a click, this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just have the track playing and I'm gonna just jump in and start recording. And by doing that, I just press play and I can press record. And at the moment, nothing is going on. You'll see it's actually in record mode and it's just waiting for me to play something. Turn record off. And what I've done here, you'll notice the last loop through, it's actually showing those events here. If I click on this show lanes, you'll notice there are actually some other things going on here. So it's worth bearing in mind that Cubase has a, a functionality which allows you to record multiple takes as different events. Now, I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete that. I'm gonna go back to my old way of doing things. I'm going to set the pre-roll and I'm going to dive in and hopefully be able to add something straight away. And of course, I've got to remember to set the metronome to come on. Now, this is a particularly unexciting beat but that will at least allow me to demonstrate some of the things that you can do when you actually want to get stuck in and do some interesting editing. So again, I'm going to click on, double click on this, and you'll see here that I have my events. Now this time what I want to do is I'm going to be, if the playing was a little bit out, I might find it starts to snap to some odd grid points. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select that kick drum here, and I'm going to use a grid this one quarter grid here. I press quantize and it nudges them all into the right place. This time for the other part, the hi-hat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to a sixteenth. But in fact, rather than, use, rather than editing this window here, I'm actually going to go into the drum editor. Now this drum editor suddenly looks quite different from the previous key editor. We no longer have the piano roll down the left-hand side. 
and as, it, as you'd expect, it's geared up to actually editing drums in place. Now what's interesting, it's only showing those two sets of drums. If I want to show a whole load of other tracks, then I can see them all here. But it's a little bit confusing because they're quite spaced apart. So this is quite useful. I click on this show drum sounds with events. It allows me just to see what's going on. We've got the kick drum here, the bass drum, and we've got the hi-hat there. And what I can then do is I can then start thinking about how I want to uh, move events around or quantize them, whatever. I've selected it, I press 16th, and suddenly they've snapped into the right place. Let's turn the metronome off. Now if we start showing the other tracks available, the other sounds, you'll see that these are nicely labelled. That's one advantage of using the kits within Cubase. I can then start thinking about other sounds I want to add. And if I want to add a sound, I can click on the drumstick tool. And I can start adding other sounds there. Now the problem I've got at the moment is this um, I've got a four bar loop going on and actually what I want to do I think is just listen to one bar at any one time so I'm going to drag this across and this highlighted area means that I'll only be getting one bar the track's a little bit slow at the moment as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to start to speed it up let's go back to 120 beats per minute bit too fast, let's slow it down again, maybe go to about 105. Now something interesting here is that I might want to look at a load of MIDI events at the same time. I can select these parts, double click on them and I can see everything together. You'll notice I've got my chords here and these ones are slightly, slightly greyed out these are the drums. If I want to switch to those, I can see those as well. There are times when you're actually editing something and you want to say particularly keyboard parts and other things like that and pads and you want to see what's going on across a mul multiple tracks and that's where it can be really, really useful. But let's just stick to our drums at the moment. Something I didn't point out before is you can copy events as well by holding down the Alt key and moving them. And you can see here, I can add events, make stuff more complicated. I'm going to use the commands I chose before to change the length. It makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. I can add other sounds. I can use my pencil tool. I can copy it. I can exit this, I can go back into my chords. I can change the length. Let's turn the snap off so I can change it to something a bit smaller. Put the snap back on, copy a whole load of events together. I can move them around. I can change the velocity back. can change the feel of the track. So in this video we've looked at adding instruments and we've looked at some of the basic principles of editing MIDI and how we can change things like velocity, quantize, in other words the timing, we can move events around and we can select different aspects of the various tools to achieve a different groove, to change notes and various other functions allow you to manipulate MIDI and improve the tracks or try out some interesting creative ideas.